NuggetCast IT Training Audio Podcast, February 2015. Welcome to NuggetCast, the audio podcast version. I'm your host, Steve Barth. In this month's show, we're going to try something a little bit different. Now, most of the podcasts that I listen to tend to have two hosts. I mean, I think you get a little more entertaining banter that way. And let's face it, who wants to sit there and just listen to me talking for a while? So I've asked one of my key Nugget Cast collaborators to join me on the mics today. So please welcome CBT Nuggets' Jake Rolf to Nugget Cast. Jake, how's it going today? Not too bad, Steve. Um, yeah, I uh, have been in a number of the uh, podcasts uh, to this point, to my detriment, other people's detriment, random bike path riders' detriment. Yes, <laughs> it's been an interesting time. Uh, you've been all over the place on Nugget Casts from the very first episode. Yeah, yeah, I think I've kind of been in it from the get-go. Yeah, back in the Ajax days. Now, for those of you who are wondering what we're talking about, if you've watched the video version of the show over the years, You'll probably recognize Jake. He's probably like one of the main guys that I use in as many show intro pieces as I can. If I need something zany done on camera, I just go to Jake and he does what I ask, which is awesome. So that means I'm going to ask you, what was one of your favorite episodes to shoot or even a favorite behind the scenes moment that you've had over the years on NuggetCast? Oh man, there's, (laughs) there are a lot of them, but uh, my own my own personal moment. Okay, I got I got to throw a shout out to Zach because there was an awesome moment where we, sh- we were shooting the Bitcoin one, and he's playing the guy that's ripping apart the machine with a pickaxe, and <laughs> he smashes the whole thing, and out of his mouth rolls one of the best puns off the cuff ever, and he didn't even intend it, and he does the whole, uh, I guess we're a bit late. <laughs> And it was so realized. hard to hold it together when he said that. And I'm sitting there going, don't lose it, don't lose it, don't lose it. <laughs> it was awesome. But uh, my own personal favorite was uh, we are shooting the camp episode where I'm standing up on the ladder. I'm supposed to be on the zip line, and you're laying on the ground shooting, and the, the guy rolls up on the bike. And this was in the outtakes. If you guys haven't seen it, go to that episode. Which, yeah. So, so, which so let me set this up real, so, real fast. We're doing that the IT communications episode last, uh, I think it was July. And so we're shooting along a bike path, but we specifically picked a location that made it look like summer campy, uh, outdoorsy. It was actually right outside our office. Um, So we're right there along a bike path. I'm down lying on the ground shooting up at Jake. He's up on a ladder uh, because we're trying to simulate him being way up. like Rope tied around my waist, helmet on, looking ridiculously panicked. Yep. And we hear along the bike path. Now, Now, to set... A little bit more up there's there's a tripod sitting in it our bike path is probably about eight feet wide the tripod is sitting into the path possibly a foot and a half to two feet not in anybody's way not even in the slightest and on the bike path people come up on things and they have the little bells on the bike and here's a little ding 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 well this rings out and i'm like okay i just look to the side just to see who's coming along and who's intersecting with who and there's no one on the path except for two people, this guy and this gal. They're in line coming along, and they're on the side of the bike path where the tripod's sitting into. I'll give them that. And they're stopped, ringing their bell. And I'm just, like, confused. <laughs> and suddenly I hear them start talking about, your tripod's blocking the path. And they sound really offended. I'm like, you got to be kidding. This is a joke, right? And uh, no, no, it was not a joke. Uh, they roll a little closer and then start talking about out loud to us. We should just kick it off the path since it's in the way. We'll just kick it out of the way. And I'm like, hey, there's plenty of room on the left. I'm, I'm friendly, amicable. Hey, there's plenty of room on the left. And this guy goes nuts. He literally starts dropping the F-bomb, blowing us out of our minds with just cussing at us and screaming at the top of his lungs. And I'm like, is this even happening? What is going on? And being, how do I put it? <laughs> uh, being who I am, being Jake, I, <laughs> I generally am kind of a wise butt. We'll keep that the clean version for the podcast. Um, other people might have worse words for that for me. Uh, I uh, pop off with "Take his old loft," <laughs> and oh wow, for two weeks I had almost the entire office 
hollering at me to take a Zoloft. Half of our trainers emailed me and told me to take a Zoloft. <laughs> that yeah, is if, if anyone wants to see the video footage of that, if you go to uh, our YouTube channel, uh, CBT or youtube.com forward slash CBT Nuggets, uh, you can go back to the July episode, which is on communications and IT. Uh, scroll to the very end of the episode, and you'll be able to see that, at least from my camera's point of view, as I was rolling there on the ground. I was, wish we could have got that guy's face. <laughs> Probably would have had a blur. I never saw him. I was lying on the ground focused up at you. I was like, what you was should, that? It would have been even better. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever visit Eugene and you're on the bike path, watch out for the red-headed ponytail guy. Yeah. yeah. Apparently he uh, <laughs> gets on a lot of people over there. Yeah. So uh, suffice it to say here at NuggetCast, we do a lot of different wacky things. We like to take IT skills that might sound complicated and make them easy to understand and hopefully entertaining if you appreciate our sense of humor. Speaking of which, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about our next subject, our next show, which is VMware and virtualization. And so as Jake and I were discussing ideas, he came up with an interesting little plan for how to showcase the importance of virtualization. Jake, what was your idea? So for me, as I understand VMware, and I'm by no means an expert on the subject, but I do get the idea, uh, VMware is a way to minimize the number of appliance you act, appliances you actually have to use in a server room or in, a, in an organization where you can run one appliance and have multiple server VMs or virtual machines running on it. So effectively, the thing that hit my mind is you're trying to put 10 pounds of crap in a one pound bag, as the saying goes. And um, so that was the idea. It's like, okay, well, what happens if you relate that to the human workforce? What are you trying to do here? Okay, you have a limited amount of space. You've got, say, one server, but you need to be running five or six or 10 servers and so how do I get all that to fit? Well, VMware's that solution. It's a cost solution. It's a, a hardware, you know, iteration solution. So you wanted to stuff as much as you can in a small space. And so for me, that was, hmm, company downsizing or startup company has very limited office space. So they want to spend as much as little as possible on their office and as much as possible on the people they need to do it. So hey guys, we're all gonna work in this nice little small office space. Let's all cram in here and get cozy. And I'm thinking piles of like 50 people in a little bitty corner office trying to all work at the same time. And so the let's stuff as many of our employees in office. And, and the sadistic part of me was, I really wanna see my coworkers stuffed in an office, office uncomfortably. Exactly. And I ended up in the corner stuck with them. So hey, you know, <laughs> when you're when you're gonna be a, sa a sadist, at least take part. Yeah, as I'm sitting there tenting my fingers, going, oh, yes, let's film that. Let's see how many people we can shove in an office. <laughs> we did and not get as many as I would have liked. That's what I was going to say. Oh, my gosh. We, we discovered we could fit a few more people than we expected into that little office. Well, well, let's go ahead and bring in the expert here. So this month we're talking to CBT Nuggets trainer Keith Barker to enlighten our minds as far as virtualization goes. So today we're going to talk about the basics of virtualization. We're going to talk about what a template is, why companies are flocking to virtualization, what an ESXi hypervisor is, and where the biggest cost savings are coming from. Keith Barker, welcome to NuggetCast. How are you doing today? I am doing great. Thanks for having me, Steve. Awesome. So today we're talking VMware. So I'm a debate coach, and what I always ask my students to do when we're practicing debate is define our terms. So let's let's figure out what we're talking about. Let's define our terms in an idealistic, you know, paradise city sort of way. What is VMware? Okay, that's a great start. So VMware is a company. Da da da. There it is. <laughs> and and VMware specializes on virtualization. And and virtualization itself, that might be a it might be a familiar concept for some and new to others. So let's talk about the virtualization, what that is. Many years ago, uh, for example, let's say a decade ago, if we wanted to roll out servers, we would do something like this. We would do an order, get a physical server, it would arrive. We would then install software. Maybe we want a web server or a SQL server or a database server, whatever. We would install the software and then be up and running. So then if we wanted another server, a second server, guess what we'd have to do? Build another one. Yeah, same process. You acquire new hardware, you build the server, you install the software, and you get it going. Now, the challenge is, is that having a room full of servers, on average, you might have some servers that are like 5% utilized, others that are you know 20% utilized. 
but we're wasting a whole bunch of CPU and memory that are just sitting there not being used. So virtualization is all about taking multiple physical systems and the software and apps that are running on those and then condensing them into uh, fewer numbers of uh, physical servers, computers, and then having virtualized servers running in each of them. So instead of having 20 physical servers with 20, phys 20 um, apps running on one on each, we could have maybe three servers with all those virtualized services running on that same hardware. It just it makes a lot more sense because we don't have to have a single physical server for each single physical or single virtual application. So what then is a template? That's a word I've heard used with this. Gotcha. Um, maybe we've heard about templates for success. Like if you follow these instructions, you'll end up with a successful result. Well, in a virtualized world, a virtual machine, instead of having to install, let's think about Windows or Linux, instead of taking the install CD and installing it every single time, what we can do is we can create what's like a, a almost perfect image of what we want our virtual machine to look like. And then we can create a template out of that. And it's like cookie cutters. If you uh, need another five or 10 servers, you simply launch five or six, you know, five or 10 more from the template and it rolls them out, including changing things like the security identifiers and the MAC addresses and everything else. It makes it very automated. Now this is not to get around licensing. We still need to license a vendor's products for each, our usage, but it certainly makes it a lot faster to roll it out instead of having to, instead of taking an hour or two hours to roll out an operating system, we could do it in like five or 10 minutes. Great, so why exactly then are companies flocking to virtualization? Is it just the um, space savings? Um, part of it is the space savings. You don't have to have 15 physical servers for 15 physical apps, but they also have the benefit of power savings. And instead of you know, powering on 15 devices, if they have three, they might be able to cut down their power by 50% or more just by having it there. Another benefit too is the speed in which we can roll out a server. You know, the development team needs a new SQL server or web server. Uh, we could you know, roll one out using a template just in minutes as opposed to possibly hours or days as it used to be. Awesome. So tell us about these ESXi hypervisor. What, what exactly is that? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, first of all, I love the term ESXi. It has the, you know, has the three letters that if you rearrange them could spell sex, but I don't know if that was intentional or not. But <laughs> what an ESXi host is, that is software running on a computer that creates this virtualized playground. So on a physical computer, we'd install the ESXi host software and then on top of that, we'd have our virtualized machine. Maybe we have like 15 Windows, uh, 10 or 15 Linux machines, and whatever other operating systems we want to run. And ESXi is the, the mothership, if you will, that hosts and is uh, playing the, uh, the hosting role for all the virtual machines that are running on that computer. Okay, so if an ESXi hypervisor is at capacity and it uses up all of its resources, what then? Okay, I, I'm with you. So uh, let's say you have a company that's consolidated and they've said, okay, instead of having 15 physical servers, we're gonna have maybe two or three. What happens, or what VMware offers as part of something called vSphere, which is a fancy way of saying a lot of the pieces that go into a virtualized environment. It involves the ESXi host, as you mentioned, and also a product called vCenter to manage it all. We could, for example, at, at 2 a.m. and let's say at 4 a.m. in the morning, we may have very little need for a server. So at that time, what we could do is we could have maybe one of our physical servers hosting all the virtual machines that are needed during that time. But then maybe Monday morning comes around and people are using virtualized desktops and so forth. And we need and one ESXi host says, I'm out of memory, I'm out of CPU power. With distributed resource scheduler and distributed power management, we can actually have a second or third ESXi host kick on and then automatically, you know, automatically distribute the load across those servers. So it's the systems are on when you need them. They can scale down when you don't need as many. That saves power. It also saves on the life cycle for a physical device as far as how long it can run. And it's uh, here's the crazy thing. It works and, and people use it big time. And that's a big benefit to save on power and also not have to pay for resources that we're just not using. Awesome. So what are the biggest savings then when using virtualization? That's a great question. So as far as savings go, probably the, we're not gonna save money for licensing of the actual you know, operating systems because if you're using 10 copies of you know, Windows 8.1, you need to pay for 10 copies of Windows 8.1. But where it does, and you have to purchase you know, physical hardware, so there's not really a saving in the capital expense immediately, but operationally, 
think about it for <laughs> let's say you have a new sales department or you have new engineering or human resources you need to bring up new virtual machines for those users that can be done in minutes let's say there's a new patch that comes out if we're using horizon view and we're using a, a replica of a linked clone we could go ahead and make a patch or update a patch test it verify it and we could roll that out to dozens or hundreds or thousands of virtual desktops in what hours for thousands but a very short period of time versus having an operating system running on every single customer's machine which would take days or possibly months to roll out that patch so probably operational expenses are cut way way down and more importantly probably than that is there's also an increased value that comes to play when when businesses have to be agile and they have to be able to turn and move this gives companies the opportunity to do that and not be mired down in existing infrastructure because it can change very very quickly with the right you know the right people who know how to make the vmware work and the vmware tools in place so what's the takeaway what do you want people leaving this podcast knowing about vmware uh, I would strongly recommend <laughs> VMware is here to stay. I, it's probably it's a huge player in the virtualization space. Virtualization is getting bigger and bigger as opposed to shrinking. So I would encourage everybody to become familiar with what a hypervisor is, as, as we talked about, is the environment where we can create virtualized machines. And I would strongly recommend that you become at least familiar with VMware. A great way to start with that is a VCA, the VMware Certified Associate. Very simple, just the concepts. And if you love it and want to jump in more deep, the next step would be the VMware Data Center Virtualization Specialist or VCP, the v, uh, Visa, VMware Certified Professional in Data Center Virtualization. And then there's other areas as well, des uh, desktop virtualization and orchestrating large environments and so forth. But the starting point would be a VCA for the concepts and then the VCP for Data Center Virtualization. That's the takeaway. I think everybody should be at least familiar with the concepts of the uh, of VMware. And here's one of the big reasons. Nobody wants to be the one person at the table when they start talking about some basic virtualization services. Nobody wants to be that one person who's like, I don't know what that is, and I'm too afraid to ask. Because it's really important to be aware of at least the basics so we can at least you know take in additional information and leverage the tools that are available to us. For the consumer, there's products like VMware Workstation for Windows, and there's v uh, Fusion for the Mac side to do virtualization, which is equally as powerful. If you have a Mac and you want to run a Windows app or a Windows uh, host, you can easily spin that up very, very quickly with those other products from VMware as well. Now, they're not the only, VMware is not the only virtualization company out there. That's true. But they are probably one of the most recognized. And at the end of the day, their products rock and they work. So I would strongly recommend you, if you haven't yet, take a look and get a little bit involved with VMware, at least at the VCA level to get that basic understanding. That would be my takeaway. Keith Barker, awesome, awesome stuff. Thank you so much for being part of the show. And as we've always said, that's what we're really about here at NuggetCast. We do want to make IT feel easy and fun and really help you get excited to learn more about it. But one of the things that we were discussing here in the office last week when we were bringing up and brainstorming future show topic ideas is the fact that we don't really want the show to be about just us promoting what we want to promote as a, as a company. We want the show to be about what you guys as our audience want to hear. So we really would love some feedback. Let us know what kind of things you would like to, to have us explore or tear apart or make entertaining in the IT world. So what you need to do is you need to send an email to CBT Podcasts, and that's plural, so CBT, P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S, -S, at cbtnuggets.com. Let us know what kind of topics you'd like to hear and where you would like us to go, and we will do the best we can to get as many show topics in as we can. We're more than happy to apply our completely demented minds to your brilliant ideas. Yes, we love to use our demented minds and... Sometimes it gets scary around here. <laughs> I can think of a couple podcasts we had to nix because it got out of hand. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go into details there. Uh, the other thing is just also remember we have past episodes of the show on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash CBT Nuggets. We're on the iTunes Music Store. Just search for NuggetCast and you'll find us on there. And also remember we are on the CBT Nuggets blog at blog.cbtnuggets.com. Well, well said. So that's it for this month's show. Tune in next month when I try to convince Jake to jump off of a five-story building onto a mini trampoline, all to explain subnetting. 
Wait, what? Well, I haven't run that idea by you yet. That, um, subnet, not that kind of netting. Oh. No. Let's, let's talk, Steve. We, we, we can make it stick netting? No. no. Not Come that on. kind of netting. All right, everybody. See you next month. Thanks for listening. And always remember to watch, learn, and conquer.